you know, there are some vehicles that just scream adventure, right? The kind that makes you want to pack a bag, grab a map, and just hit the open road. Like, picture a classic VW bus cruising down the California coast. Yeah. I mean, it's iconic. But what's really interesting is how the Volkswagen Transporter went from, like, a simple work van to this global symbol of, like, freedom and uh, escape. Yeah. And that journey, that's what we're diving into today. It really is a story of unexpected evolution. You know, we're talking about a vehicle designed for practicality in a post-war Europe that somehow becomes a canvas for counterculture movements and a symbol of wanderlust. And we've got some fascinating excerpts today that detail, like, the transporters rise to this iconic status. You know, I love those aha moments where, like, history takes an unexpected turn, and I think we've got a bunch of them coming up, so buckle up. I think you might be right. Okay, so picture this. 1947, Europe's still recovering from the war, right? Practicality, that's the name of the game. Nobody's worried about flashy sports cars yet. They need vehicles to rebuild, to transport, get things done. Enter Ben Pawn, a Dutch importer, visiting the Volkswagen factory. And this is where our story takes that first intriguing turn. Ben Pawn spots this, well, unusual vehicle called a platen wagon. Imagine, like, a bare-bones chassis with a flatbed just plopped on top. The driver is practically perched over the engine. Not exactly the blueprint for a cultural icon, right? No, not exactly what you'd picture calling up to Woodstock. So what happens next? Well, Ben Pawn, he sees something more. He sees beyond that uh, rudimentary design. He envisions enclosing the driver and cargo area, creating a vehicle that's both practical and dare I say it, stylish. Okay, so he's got this vision. What then? He sketches it out right there on the spot. Talk about a light bulb moment. And then he presents it to Volkswagen. Wow, you've got to admire that kind of boldness. Just walking in with a napkin sketch and saying, hey, I think you should build this. I know, right? But here's the thing. Volkswagen listened. They recognized there was something special about Ben Pond's idea. And get this. By 1950, the first transporter, the Type 2, it's born. That's incredible. So... From a simple sketch to an actual vehicle in just a few years. Exactly. And it wasn't just about creating one van. Volkswagen was smart about it. They offered multiple versions of the transporter, you know, catering to different needs, both commercial and like the emerging passenger car market. That adaptability, that understanding that the transporter could be like a blank slate for different needs, that was huge for its early success. It's like they tapped into this desire for a vehicle that could really do it all hauling cargo one minute and then becoming like a little home away from home for adventurous families the next. And speaking of adventure, we got to talk about the version that really embodies that spirit, the Samba. Ah, uh, the Samba. Unveiled at the 1951 Frankfurt Motor Show, it was a stroke of genius by Volkswagen, taking the practical transporter, but then like infusing it with style, a touch of luxury even. Right. It was more than just a workhorse at that point. Exactly. And those panoramic windows, those weren't just for show. They became synonymous with the vehicle, giving passengers this unparalleled view of their surroundings. Imagine cruising down the Autobahn, sunlight streaming in. It just screamed freedom. And it wasn't just the windows. It had that two-tone paint job, chrome accents, even the option for a radio, which was a pretty big deal back then. But here's a little mystery for you. Nobody seems to know for sure where the name Samba came from. Some say it's a playful nickname. Others think it might be a disguised acronym. It's a curious detail, isn't it? This air of mystery just adds to the transporter's allure. Whatever the origin, the Samba with its, you know, sunny disposition and spacious interior, it perfectly captured the spirit of the early 50s. That budding sense of optimism and yearning for something, well, something beyond the everyday. You know, it's amazing how the Samba really captured that post-war feeling, that desire for something, something beyond just rebuilding. It became like a symbol of possibility, of escape, you know? Totally. But it wasn't just about the look, right? Volkswagen was also always working on the transporter behind the scenes, making it even better. What were some of the big changes they made back then? Well, throughout the 60s, they were always making improvements, like really game-changing stuff. One of the biggest was a more powerful engine. Remember, this was when people were starting to really explore hitting the open road more than ever before. The transporter... It needed more muscle to keep up, you know? Right. It makes sense. Yeah. To haul all your gear, navigate those mountain roads, you need a bit of oomph. What else? Oh, they also redesigned the rear hatch, made it much wider and easier to load and unload. Okay, so bigger engine, better hatch. Sounds pretty practical. Exactly. It seems like a small thing, but it made a world of difference, especially for those using it for, like, camping trips or hauling larger items. Those little things add up. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You can really see how much thought Volkswagen put into the user experience, always trying to make the transporter as versatile and easy to use as possible. Yeah, they were ahead of the curve in that sense. And it's this combination of practicality, adaptability, and you can't forget that charm that really made the transporter a perfect fit for the counterculture movement of the 60s. It wasn't just a vehicle anymore, it was a statement. It's funny how things just become symbols, isn't it? The transporter went from being about post-war practicality yeah. to this symbol of freedom, of not conforming, rejecting the status quo even. It was like it found a whole new purpose, a new identity almost, right alongside the people who embraced it. Absolutely. It's really a testament to how powerful design can be, how it can capture the spirit of a generation. The transporter became like a blank canvas for self-expression. People were customizing it, making it their own, reflecting their personalities and passions. And that's where its legacy really comes from, don't you think? It's more than just a way to get around. It reflects a time, a movement, a whole way of life even. Precisely. And speaking of its history, remember how we talked about the Platten Wagon, that like bare bones vehicle that started it all? Oh yeah, the one that looked like a flatbed with an engine. How could I forget that? Well, get this, those really early transporter models, especially the rare ones, the barn door versions from the 50s, those are super collectible now. Oh really? So they're like vintage cars now? Absolutely. We're talking serious investments. Wow. Okay. So how much are we talking here? What's a barn door transporter go for these days? A well-maintained one. You're looking at anywhere from 30,000 to over 100,000 euros. Get out of here. Mm. No way. Yeah. That's amazing. From workhorse to collector's item, that's quite the journey. It really shows you the lasting appeal of this vehicle. It really does. It's a testament to its design, the memories it holds, the emotions it evokes, the transporter story. It's far from over. It's true. And Volkswagen, they've done a really brilliant job of weaving that legacy into their modern lineup. They really have, yeah. I mean, look at the ID. Buzz, for example. They're not just being cheeky with the name, are they? Not at all. The ID Buzz, with its retro look but also modern tech, it's a direct descendant, you know, of that original transporter. It, it takes all those iconic elements, the round shape, that big VW logo, and it reimagines them, you know for today, for the electric age. Yeah, yeah. It's like a nod to the past while embracing the future of driving. Mm. I wonder, did Volkswagen plan to make it retro or did it just kind of happen, you know, because of the original transporter's design? It's probably a little of both, honestly. Volkswagen knows how much people love the transporter, the memories they have, and they've tapped into that nostalgia in a smart way while still innovating. The ID, Buzz proves that good design never really gets old. You can honor the past and still be cutting edge. Makes you think about what other old designs might come back around, right? Yeah. But back to the transporter, it's more than just a way to get around, right? It's something more. What is it about some designs that just capture people's imaginations, you know, mm. and last for generations? That's the million dollar question. With the transporter, it's a few things coming together, really. Timeless design, that feeling of freedom and adventure it gives you, and of course how adaptable it is. But maybe the most important thing is that it became like a blank slate for people. They could take the transporter and build their own dreams onto it. It became a part of them, a way to show who they were, yeah. Exactly. Surfing trips, turning it into a camper, or just piling in with your friends. The transporter reflected the people who drove it. And that connection, that's special. That shared feeling, that sense of belonging, that's what makes it more than a car. As we wrap up our deep dive today on the Volkswagen Transporter, it makes me think about all the other vehicles out there that have that special place in our hearts. Right. Those hidden stories. What were those moments in the design process where it all clicked? What shaped them into what they are? It's something to consider. Mm -hmm. So for everyone listening, keep exploring, keep asking questions. You never know what you'll find. Maybe even that old everyday object has a bigger story than you realize. Until next time, keep those engines running.